Well, hello, everyone. I was going to say good evening, but then I realized when I said that in the last hour that it's evening for me. I'm Peggy George, and I'm located in Phoenix, Arizona, where it is 9 p.m. on Saturday evening. But I think for many of you, maybe all of you, it's probably Sunday afternoon. Now, I'm not sure about you, Shambles. Is it Sunday night for you? I, that I think so. Eleven o'clock. Eleven o'clock Sunday morning. Eleven o'clock Sunday morning. Okay, thank you. It is so great to be here with you and to be able to enjoy this session to together with Shambles Guru also known as Chris Smith, um, and I am so looking forward to his presentation on uh, YouTube, teaching, learning, and wherever, <laughs> at parties wherever. He's a delightful presenter, and I, I just know a few things about him. And some of you may have already discovered this on the on our conference website. He is truly a digital nomad evangelist, and especially the evangelist part. He just reaches out to everyone and provides all of us with so many great resources in a way that we can always find them and then share them with others. He's been working mainly with international school teachers in Southeast Asia for more than 25 years. He was previously the ICT advisor for the English School Foundation in HK, where he was the head of the Teacher Professional Development Center, and then responsible for writing, implementing, monitoring, and evaluating the foundation's overall ICT development plan for the 16 schools. So we are going to benefit from all of that rich experience tonight and enjoy the delightful sense of humor and rich experience of Shambles Guru. So with that, I'd like to just say thank you to our sponsors and our supporters. We are so grateful to all of them. Thanks to Blackboard Collaborate and to Steve Hargaden for providing us these rooms. Thanks to the Australia E-Series uh, for being such huge supporters of this effort. To Saiba Academy, another huge effort. And of course, Shambles Net and Coach Carol Net, both of whom have been huge uh, supporters and worker bees making all of this happen. The Learning Revolution Project, which is also um, a project organized by Steve Hargadon and is just a rich resource that brings to us so many valuable virtual conferences, webinars, and connections with educators around the world. And I also want to say a special huge thank you to all of the uh, volunteers. There have been so many people working tirelessly for so long getting this ready, and then moderators who've been faithfully in all of these sessions helping us to um, navigate the technology. So thank you to all of you. Let's take a quick minute and put ourselves on the map. I know you all know this routine, so just grab one of those um, faces, put it on the map, and even type yourself in the, uh, um, I got one finally that would grab, type your location in the uh, chat too. Face for you in WA. Well, now, if I knew where that was, I'd be happy to put a face there. <laughs> Can someone help Penny out? <laughs> that's great. Thank you. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you let these people in from west, southwestern USA. Thank you so much for doing that. And now we have some polls. Chris, would you like... I'm going to ask these. I'm not going to ask you that question. Do you have a YouTube account? Please give us a green check for yes and a red X for no. And every one of you knows how to use that tool. You're awesome. That's great. 
so only one among us does not have a YouTube account. And do you use videos in your classroom? So if you're not a teacher, then you can leave it as none. All right, so and I am not a teacher, so I will be leaving mine as none. And it looks like all but one is using videos in your classroom. Thanks for posting that. I think, Carol, you may be doing that magic. Thank you for posting those results. All right, and we have one more. Chris, I'm going to let you take over from here. Great timing, Peggy. Thanks, Thanks very much. Um, actually, before we do do this, I, I woke up this morning thinking about what might happen to the recordings of uh, these webinars. And I wonder if, what do you think? I wonder if there will be 22nd century digital world citizens watching, it, watching these recordings in over 100 years' time. Yeah, that's possible. So I, I'm going to take a mo uh, you know, the opportunity now simply to say to, uh, to those, those digital citizens in 100 years' time, probably history students looking at the history of, of ed educational technology, I'm just going to give a wave to you and uh, go out and have a beer and, uh, and drink to all our healths even though our help has gone by, by then. But it's, it's interesting. I wonder if these recordings will be viewed in 100 years. It's, uh, it could be amazing. And uh, uh, I think, in fact, that, uh, now I mustn't ramble on, but I was going to say, how would it be now if, us, if we and our students had access to digital materials from the Victorian era in the same way as we have access to these materials? But that's rambling. Let's not do that. What I'd like you to do is um, to give you access to the whiteboard so that hopefully the whiteboard tools have come on down the side of your whiteboard. And what I'd like you to do, so we can get a feel for our different uh, uh, celebrations and uh, headaches and, uh, and experiences, is uh, any experiences, stories, or views you have about YouTube and just Click on the whiteboard and click on the A there so you can type in text and type in there. Give you a minute or so to do that. If uh, you're on an iPad, you won't be able to do this. So what I'll do is, or what we'll do is, we need to keep an eye on the chat. You can put that in the chat. Any experiences, stories, or views you have about YouTube? Penny in chat, you mentioned permission from your IT department. We're going to touch on that later on. URLs are great. This is good if you've got URLs uh, to put in for, for us all to follow up afterwards. And if you just accidentally delete something and you're on a Windows machine, Control Z brings it all back. How many times has that saved us? Okay, I 
think I'll move on. I want to get a special permission for our deep housing for the competition, whoever that was, if you have a URL to that, throw it into chat and then we can check it later. And in fact, to help you with that, what I've done is I've set up a back channel tool. I'll put the URL into chat. I set up a back channel tool where um, most of the links that I'm going to cover are available already so that you don't have to come back to the recording if you're just looking for these. Uh, uh, but if you like me, I tend to click on them all and then check my tabs after the session. Okay, thank you for that. Let's move on. The uh, the other uh, tool, which is not YouTube, but which is a tool I'm a real fanboy of, is QR codes. And you can, if you have a a, a mobile phone with you, and you're looking at this on your, your iPad or your laptop or your desktop, if you download a QR reader and you point them at these QR codes, it will take you to the URLs. Um, I thought about doing a QR code session, I'm wondering whether it's been done to death already, but uh, so, so, so powerful QR codes. Uh, and, and the most powerful example I've ever had was walking into a science lab and seeing a skeleton covered in QR codes that students had researched. And when you pointed your phone at them, it took you to places about the particular bones it was stuck on. Um, so, uh, 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 so that there's the QR codes. Um, all of my slides have a Creative Commons on the bottom right-hand corner, and this QR code on the left goes to, to Shambles. And these QR codes, this one goes to the app. Oh, you can't see my pointer, can you? This one goes to the app, and this one goes to YouTube. I have a lot of slides. We're going to go through them very, very quickly. And uh, uh, I see what my task is for the next uh, 35, 40 minutes is to raise awareness rather than go into specific details on how you drive particular things. Uh, uh, and that way we can get through it all. In fact, I'm, I'm amazed at how much there is in YouTube. It's no longer just a video hosting site. It's just phenomenal. If I'm asked about what um, uh, hosting service do I recommend for videos without doubt, it goes to YouTube because it's highly controllable. It is uh, a social network, and that's important to know. And it does have, as, as was mentioned earlier in chat, it does have, thanks for that, Lex, it does have um, lots of configuration and control. So I mentioned the back channel tool already, which is here. And here's me being clever, having a uh, a, a QR code which includes the uh, the Aussie Live logo, and all the slides here are also uh, on Flickr as well. And move on. Some facts. I know you can read, so uh, I won't read it for you. These facts, I quoted the source on the bottom, so if you're doing a presentation like this in the future, maybe check their own statistics. Heavily mobile, it's just phenomenal. Um, and there are YouTube sites which are language specific, so you could go to the French one and everything's in French. Now that's interesting if you're a French teacher, why use the uh, English language uh, YouTube uh, portals, why not use the French one when everything's in French, or the Spanish one, or the Russian one, or the hmm, Chinese one. I'm not sure if there's a Chinese one, because China actually blocks YouTube at the moment. Oh, I, I, I'm not sh I haven't got it with me. If you want to check, of course, I'm living, I'm living in uh, Thailand, so I'm living in Southeast Asia, and I love it. Um, but there is a website, and you can just do a Google search for it. It's something like just search for, is the website blocked in China? And there's a website where you can put a URL into it, and it will tell you if it's blocked in China. 
Um, I did that yesterday with YouTube just to double check and Facebook, and the response was uh, that they're both blocked in China at the moment. Not in Hong Kong, not in Taiwan, but in China. Hey, Peggy. Having Peggy on your team, you know, is is amazing. <laughs> She's just put, a, put that link into, into chat. Um, I have an area on uh, the Shambles website. I wonder if anybody's clicking the QR code with their phones to go to the sites. Um, uh, and there's, so, there's, there's close to 80, 90 different links about YouTube, and especially how to use YouTube in the classroom, um, as well as tools. Now, I'm not going to go into uh, how to sign up. We could lose half an hour doing that. And what I will say is if you have a Gmail account, then whether you like it or not, you, have, you already have a, a YouTube account. So if you go to YouTube.com and you click on login, you can log in with your Gmail account. And then when you click on your, uh, uh, on your, on your icon here, at the top here, then you get uh, this menu coming up. And this bit here says my channel, and uh, and they use the term channel rather than account, so that's a semantic aspect. So I'm going to be talking about my YouTube channel, but it's it's really my YouTube account. So this is a very simple menu, and one I come back to all the time, just by clicking on on the icon in the top right hand side. So my channel, you know, so manage your videos here. This is where you can subscribe to other channels. And other channels might be people, or they might be organizations like, uh, like the BBC or ISTE. Um, something about settings and uh, all the channels that I'm just, well, you can have more than one channel, actually. I'm just keeping an eye on chats. So this is my uh, channel. Uh, youtube.com slash shambles guru. Somewhere in the settings, uh, when you first sign up, it would have been youtube.com slash a letter, I thought, is it a T or a P, and then slash shambles guru. You can configure it so that it takes out that middle letter. So youtube.com slash shambles guru. On the right hand side, I have uh, featured channels. You see the green arrow goes to that. These are channels. I'm not subscribed to them. I just think they're really good ones. And many of them are, are uh, very similar to Aussie Live. They're webinar conferences uh, down the side there. And boy, are we, are we spoiled as educators now. Too much. Our, our challenge now is how, how, do you, how do you manage your time, time management? The list down the left-hand side is the list of channels uh, that I've subscribe to uh, and you can subscribe to them when you go to somebody's page there'll be a subscribe providing you're logged in to your account when you go to anybody's uh, YouTube channel or page there'll be a subscribe button there um, and so down the side there I've got some people Chris Lehman I've got TED Ed uh, TEDx Google uh, RSA um, there's a whole list to build up that list isn't done in 24 hours. It's something that goes on forever now. If you start, if you're using YouTube now until you stop using it, then you'll be finding channels. And uh, I was going to say you'd find channels you want to unsubscribe to, but that really happens to me. <clears throat> okay, next. You can customize your channel. And uh, I'm not going to go through the details of customizing it, but one of the reasons for going there and customizing your channel is it will give you details of how you can put yourself in good standing. Sounds like going to the head teacher, doesn't it, and saying, uh, am I a good standing teacher? And, uh, and um, sorry, I'm looking at chat. Um, the, the the instructions on making yourself putting yourself in good standing means importantly that you can actually put videos up there which are longer than 15 minutes. 
So that's, that's that part, customizing your channel. The second, so that's channels, the second most important aspect in my mind for YouTube are playlists. You don't even have to upload any videos yourself to create playlists because most playlists are um, videos that other people have put up there. Now I have dozens of playlists and many of them are subject related. So I have a playlist of um, volcano videos. I have a playlist of uh, uh, rice, harvesting rice videos. Um, I also have a few fun playlists. I have a playlist of, uh, of TEDx videos. Um, I, I have a playlist down the bottom. You might be able to see down the bottom here. I have a, a, a playlist from a group from a zillion years ago called A Taste of Honey. So they can be work related or uh, uh, play related. But playlists are very uh, powerful, <coughs> especially when you appreciate the fact that you can embed a playlist. So you can have a playlist just on um, World, well, it's World War I anniversary this year, right? So 100 years of World War I. You could have a playlist, World War I, and then you can embed that. They give you the embedding code. Again, I'm not going to show you how to do it, but you can get the embedding code of the playlist and embed it in your blog or your website or the school website. So students don't even have to come uh, to YouTube. The video will play inside the school website. So it keeps them inside the school website. It keeps people inside your blog. Playlists, very important. So there's really two aspects of the organization. One is channels, and you can have, you have your own channel, and you can recommend channels, and you can also subscribe to channels. And when you subscribe, uh, I think once a week, you'll get an email saying, this is the latest activity. And providing you set this up, allow them to do it, you get an email saying this is the latest activity on your subscribe channel. So you don't have to go looking and um, it's pushed to you. Uploading. <laughs> well, I'm not going to. Uploading. You find the button that says upload and uh, then you just follow your finger on your mobile device or you follow your mouse. <laughs> so it couldn't be any simpler. I'm not going to demo, demo it. And, uh, but what it will do is it will ask for several things. It gives you the options. And one of the options is to do with privacy. You have three options when you upload your, uh, your file, your video. And the options are, one is it can be completely public. The second option is it can be public but unlisted. So nobody can find it unless somebody else gives them the URL to get to it. And then the other one is completely private, so only you can see it when you are logged in to your account. So completely public, unlisted, and, and completely private. So if you're concerned about privacy of student videos you upload, one way of dealing with it, doesn't mean completely private, but one way of dealing with it is to make them unlisted. And unlisted means people can only find student videos if they know the URL, and they won't find the URL in the search engines. Downloading videos. <laughs> this, this is interesting. Downloading videos, and I'll talk about copyright in a second. Downloading videos. Um, I have a list down here at this URL, shambles.net pages slash school slash down bid. There's a list of uh, uh, different sites where you can download videos, not just from YouTube, but from other sites. Uh, but the favorite one in nearly every school I'm going is that uh, is KeepVid. Uh, Peggy, I'm just going to pick up the point of Peggy about Creative Commons. When you upload a video, it does say to you, I, do you want YouTube's conditions or do you want to have a Creative Commons license. Now the Creative Commons license is uh, a, a attribution. But I'll come back to that in the next slide. Anyway, keep vid. All you do is you find the URL of your um, YouTube video. You put it in this tab here and uh, then you click download. Now there's a health warning here. <laughs> Most people I know, unless, unless they're told about it, will click on this regular download. 
Or they'll click on this. They're a bit naughty. These are adverts. Don't click on those. And uh, this is the one you click on. You click on this download here. Don't click on those big adverts. It's a bit naughty, that, isn't it? You have to be, it is sneaky. Uh, you have to be careful about this. Part of your sort of your, your, your information literacy skills is to try and identify where, what are adverts, and they're getting more and more sneaky. I like the word sneaky, Peggy, uh, there. Once you do that, you'll get a list of options of what sort of uh, format or file size do you want to download. Uh, uh, and you can even just download the audio track. And I know people are doing this because they find a music video and they think, oh, I like that song. So they'll go to here and one of the options is download the MP3, not video. So you can download that. Now, whether it's legal or not, I'll, I'll touch on that in a second. If you have videos which have got subtitles, then there is another site which you might want to use called keep subs and that allows you to download videos and keep the subtitles which have advantages related to uh, special needs or language students. Copyright. Mm. Copyright. So when you upload, you have the choice of uploading. When you upload, you're asked, do you want it to be a standard YouTube license or do you want it to be a Creative Commons attribution license? Now, this, is a, this, is, this could be a bit dangerous. Creative Commons attribution means, yes, you can use it with attribution. But if you look at the fine print, it's not uh, Creative Commons attribution and you cannot use for video, uh, you cannot use for uh, commercial you cannot use to make money, you cannot cut up. It's, it, it basically says you can do anything with a video providing that you give attribution. So that's a little bit of uh, uh, help, but people, bear in mind, people could use it commercially. Um, and the standard YouTube license, and this is a dilemma for us, isn't it? Well, it's a dilemma for users, but maybe not so much for people who are posting videos on YouTube. But the standard YouTube license, well, you've probably read it already. So the answer is you can download it, but you can't legally, unless it's got a Creative Commons note there. At the top right-hand corner here, I took this out of their, uh, um, their YouTube terms. Um, it says you, you cannot download any content unless you see a download button. Well, there aren't any download buttons on YouTube. Not yet, anyway, and I'm encouraged about that. I have a moral dilemma, and any advice you can put in the chat is really appreciated. My moral dilemma is that there are tens of thousands of educators around the world downloading instructional YouTube videos to use for teaching and learning. And really, it's illegal. And, but I understand why they're doing it especially in Southeast Asia where connectivity is uh, not so good um, because you want to have it on your iPad, you want to have it on your laptop, your desktop, so that it plays and when you've got 30 or 40 children in front of you and you're not having a video caching and stopping every now and again uh, and the kids just get bored with that. So I, I my advice, and I know this has been recorded, but my advice is, <laughs> is, and I'm not a lawyer, oh, that's my get out. I'm not a lawyer, so this is what I think, is that I feel comfortable downloading videos even though officially they, it's illegal according to what YouTube says. But I think the moral and real legal aspect is the commercialism. If I was using it in a closed classroom with students, I, or with teachers, because most of my work is with teachers, then I feel it's okay. But if I started putting them back into YouTube and making money because there are adverts attached to them, or I started to sell them, then I think that would be wrong. Uh, fair use is a, is a difficult one, especially Peggy, as we've got so many different countries in the world and fair use is different in different countries. Um, so, but, but I think morally, 
I feel so long as you're not making money, you start to make money, but you're asking for trouble. So that that's the advice, but but that's the the, the official line there. Hopefully, YouTube. The phrase. I'm very optimistic about YouTube. Um, oh, <laughs> I will mention that one aspect of uh, licensing is that if you upload a video and it's got a music soundtrack, you put a music soundtrack on it, uh, and it's longer than about I think it's 10 seconds, then ba well, you ba that's not fair use. And you're you're actually breaking copyright if you've got the, the Rolling Stones singing on the background of your instructional video about about volcanoes. That was a good link, wasn't it? And uh, but what YouTube used to do is they used to say, uh, "Sorry, that's illegal. You're not supposed to use that. That music's copyright protected, not royalty free." Uh, and they would take your video down. Now they don't. They leave your video there. They just take the audio track off. Um, <laughs> Which, which I think is interesting. So if your audio track is suddenly miss, missing and it's got a lot of music in, it's probably that uh, video YouTube has taken it down. Comments are a problem. No, that's not a problem. It's not talking about problems. Comments are a challenge. You can switch comments off completely. Uh, when you upload videos, you can say, I don't want anybody to comment, or you can leave them on. And in the last year, they put a new comment management system in place where you can actually and you can't see it because my words are very small. You can actually put words in there where, if they're used and desirable words, the, the the comment will not be posted. Or you could switch on complete moderation so that every comment's moderated. But that's only if you've got weekends free and you want to just spend time doing that. <laughs> we could spend we could spend time talking about this. Good good cartoon for a for a, a, a staff room discussion. <laughs> okay, the YouTube manager um, is is here. So we showed this at the we showed uh, this at the beginning. So you click on your uh, icon at the top of your YouTube channel. You get this, which says video manager, and you can do all sorts of things in the video video manager, including the most common thing I'm asked is, can you reorder the playlists? And you can do it in in this area. There's a lot of aspects in here to give you control over what you're posting and how it's displayed or not displayed. Earlier on in chat, I saw there's an editor. And this is mind-blowing. <laughs> this is unbelievably mind-blowing. You go to this address down the bottom here. And it's a full editor. Now, this is an editor of videos you've uploaded and you're logged into your account. and you, uh, it's listing all my videos that I've uploaded, although only some of them because I've uploaded more than 500 on my account, oh, my channel, not my account. And uh, you can drag them down and drag them to here, and there's a timeline there. And then you can drag audio here, and it's a timeline along here, and you can edit. You can, uh, if you look up here, you can add annotations, you can add music, you can control the uh, fading in and fading out between clips, you can cut the clips. It's just phenomenal uh, uh, tool, which which is not, I'm not seeing it used very much. If you're using it, please put something in chat. Um, it's just, uh, it, it's just phenomenal. Moving on, 15 minutes left. Um, also, you don't have to go to that uh, uh, full editing page to be able to add, uh, to be able to enhance. And you'll find them, if you're logged in, that will, above your videos will be a button that says um, enhance up here. And uh, it's amazing. I, I, I think if you upload videos and you've done them with your iPhone or a mobile device, they're a little bit shaky, YouTube comes up, will come up with a little... Uh, dialog box saying, excuse me, boys and girls, excuse me, but your video seems a little bit shaky. Would you like us to fix it? <laughs> and if you click on yes, it does a pretty good job. But they have, if you click on enhancements, you get to this screen, and you get all sorts of things. You can also auto fix. And it does things to do with uh, um, the color and the shaking. Uh, stability. It's uh, or you, uh, here's this, here's a stabilize button, which is the shaking one. 
um, and uh, lots of different dialogues down here. You can make it in slow motion. Oh, you've videoed a physics lesson, a ball dropping. You can have it dropping in slow motion. You drop an egg, you can have it dropping in slow motion um, there. You can trim over here, and you can uh, then save your modified video. But bless their hearts, YouTube inevitably has a button which says revert to the original, so you can get back to the original. Very powerful enhancements. Captioning. Um, captioning really is subtitling, closed captioning, which actually is a legal requirement in some countries for videos. Um, I think that's a very powerful option if you're doing modern foreign languages or any languages. And that students, you could give students, uh, they'd have to have access to the account. Maybe the students have an account, or you have to give them access to an account. The video is in their account that they've made, and they can add subtitles in different languages. Very powerful for modern language teachers, or for English language teachers, ESL. Uh, English is a digital language as well. I love this, but I also love maybe a bit more is I love uh, .sub, who's been around for many years, which they allow you to take any video without being logged into YouTube. I'm sorry, I'm hesitating because I'm watching chat. <laughs> um, Go on without me, I'm just going to watch chat. No, no, no. I, uh, is perhaps a better way of doing it for managing in classrooms and with students and with flipped classrooms, whatever, is to use a, 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 a service like .sub, which allow you to embed any video off YouTube and some other services and add subtitle languages underneath it. Uh, I'm a big fanboy of .sub. There are, there are lots of different uh, video captioning tools. But that's my favorite. If you have any others, please put it in the back channel talk or in the chat so I can pick them up later. Annotation is another big tool, and it saves me so much time. Annotation is where you actually, you've uploaded your video, and you want to put stuff on text on the video, just straight text. Um, you can put links, but they have to be links to other YouTube videos, or links to a website that you've approved. And you'd have to look in YouTube to see how you approve a website. But I think you can only improve one. But this saves my, saves my bacon so many times. Because what happens is you create a, a video, or you do a screencast, you put it on YouTube, and then you go, oh, no, I missed, I missed saying something. So, so you've got the choice of one doing the whole video again, so you definitely can't go out on Saturday night, um, or use annotations because I will do that as the video is playing. You can put anywhere in the video for any length of time text, and you can make it a bit bigger, a bit smaller. It's quite simple. There's only maybe one or two fonts to choose, um, and all the tools are probably self-explanatory down here. And you get a timeline down the bottom which allows you to decide where your annotation goes, where it goes on the screen by just dragging it, uh, how long it lasts for, is it going to be a hyperlink or not. Now this, say, as I say, say, saved me so much time not going back to do something. You go, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Even if I say something wrong, I'll put some annotation on there saying, um, sorry, I wasn't quite right on that. Moving on. This time is running out. The sound, you can add audio. And if you don't want to look for audio in the world of uh, royalty-free or copyright audio and then add it to your video in, in iMovie or, or whatever, movie, Microsoft Movie Maker, whatever, you can add music. They've got tens of thousands of copyright available music where you can add that music to your video online. And I did it with this Aussie Live. One, two, oh, I'm back. You lost me then, right? Can you hear me now? Yes, OK. So you can use this uh, Aussie, uh, the, <laughs> it's Aussie Live, uh, music from these tracks here. Not to choose.
I mean, I'm having problems with my microphone. If it keeps going, I shall use and go to my other account. Um, let's go. Maybe it's telling you the time's nearly up. There's a beta version of being able to add quizzes over your videos. There is a, a, an education uh, channel, which they actually have as uh, grades. There is a YouTube for school scheme. And this is useful because if you have YouTube blocked in your school, YouTube have set something up technically, and your, your tech staff will need to uh, talk, talk to YouTube about this. And there are links here about the techie stuff. They don't want to know about the techie stuff, which allow teachers to collaboratively make videos available that they're recommending. So if your school does block YouTube, there is a midpoint and talk with YouTube about it. They're really helpful. Peggy, you're doing a great job putting those in there. Lots of edu channels. I was going to look through them, but just an impossible task. I'm not going to look through education channels for you because it will depend on what age group you're teaching and what uh, uh, subjects you're teaching and what your interests are. So do some searches, and you can either feature them or subscribe to the different edu channels. I guess a Google search would be good. I'm a geographer, and I'm looking for YouTube education channels. Any recommendations? Just type that into YouTube, into YouTube or into Google. And Google owns YouTube. There's another one for teachers, which I think is mainly just uh, channels and playlists. I said I mentioned parents uh, in the description of this session. I uh, <laughs> I think the most interesting aspect would be apps that are designed for parents, for their students to access YouTube. And these are just three examples. And you can see they're, they're not all free. Um, and, and parents can guide their students through uh, YouTube's videos that they want them to look. I think it tends to be younger parents, the youngest, yeah, youngest, the younger parents and younger younger students. I was going to mention uh, special needs. Um, and when I thought about this, I think special needs, the power of special needs support, assistive technology, would be in the configuration of the iPad more than in YouTube itself. Although there are some websites that allow you to um, display YouTube videos without all that rubbish that goes around the outside of them. Um, so so uh, I'll leave that there. Alternatives. Um, lots of alternatives. Vimeo is one of the uh, uh, popular ones. Their video quality tends to be better than YouTube, but their social network is not so big. I do use Vimeo, but I tend to use it if I'm doing something really important that needs to be high quality and may not actually be for classrooms, it might be for something else, like it's a promo thing I've made for a, a company. Of course, there's school, but of course, why am I saying that? There's school tube and there's teacher tube. Um, Peggy, this is where, where you're, you, I, I'm going to test you. Two weeks ago, there was a, a, a Saturday classroom 2.0 session from somebody, Todd somebody, who did a one hour webinar mainly about flipped classroom, but he mentioned a website for putting student videos called Sophia. Sophia. And in there, there's the ability to monitor individual students. In fact, you can monitor how long a student watches a video that's been uploaded to there. For flipped classroom, this is really powerful. And I'm feeling that option may be free. But I'm sure Peggy will put that link in. I don't think I put it in the back channel tool, actually. And I'd really advise you, have a look. And I think the guy who does it, Todd something, is the sort of USA Teacher of the Year. And he's been to the White House and done all sorts of things. Has a lovely presentation style, tons of experience. And most of his talk is very, very practical, uh, which I loved. It's, you know, and he's, he, he, he didn't hold his punches. He was saying, no, look, you know, we, we need to do this, but. Uh, 
you know, that, that's not going to work, but this might work, try this. So I'd highly advise you have a look at that Classroom 2.0 uh, presentation, which is now in the archives and on the uh, Classroom 2.0 YouTube channel. I need to go a bit faster, I think, here. Citizenship is a YouTube channel, which I put rest in peace because it was to do with politics. But the last time I looked, there wasn't much there. There is a YouTube uh, offering if you are a non-profit. So if you do any work with non-profits, uh, YouTube has allowed you to create a channel. It will also put a donation button on there, allow you to have community forums, and allows you to do live streaming. If you know anybody with a non-profit, point them to this area. Lots of other tubes. As I mentioned, YouTube, Teacher Tube, the Steam Tube if you're a Steam Engine fanatic, there's a Garden Tube if you're a gardener, there's a Scuba, scuba Tube, the School Tube. I have a dilemma with this. I used to really highlight this page. Now, you be careful with this page. I used to highlight it. And then somebody <laughs> in a school workshop once, somebody said, excuse me, put their hand up, said, can you come and look at these tubes I've just found? <laughs> and they'd gone to, can you guess what I'm going to say now? They'd gone to sex tube and porn tube, neither of which were blocked, and both of which were pretty graphic. Um, hang on, I can see you going there now. No, don't go, go there later. So you have to be careful if you're telling colleagues about, oh, just put anything in front of tube and you'll find it. You know, is there a physics tube? Is there a, is there, <coughs> you know, is there a geography tube? It might not be, but there are lots of tubes there. But be careful with the porn tube and the sex tube. How do you deal with that? Uh, obviously, a risk there. I love this one. This is a this is an app um, just for discovery. You can put it onto your mobile device, and you can say, uh, "I've got 10 minutes spare, and I'd like to see some videos about." You can, and you can choose any subject. It could be work or related or music. And uh, uh, and the app then will find them for you for that 10 minutes you've got or that five minutes you've got. It's fairly new. It's only a couple of months old. Finding other videos, I have a list on, uh, I've curated a lot. There's a list on Shambles, but I've also created it on Scoop It. Scoop It is my favorite curation tool. Lots of curation tools around Scoop, uh, Pinterest, all of them, but Scoop It is my favorite. Um, creating video. We talked about putting them up. I'd love to have done a session on creating video because I have a personal concern that many teachers spend hours and hours and hours creating videos, not only just creating them, but being very pedantic and careful and we just must just get it right. Life's too short. Let's have the kids making the videos. Uh, okay, it doesn't look quite right. That's a learning opportunity. If things go wrong, that's a learning opportunity. Um, and uh, the whole idea of visual literacy is a big one. We could have had a whole session on that. So I just wanted to make sure it was on the record. Uh, YouTube has an area aimed at creators, but if you're thinking of sitting down and doing lots of videos, for example, uh, flipping your classroom, think about having the kids make them. They're not quite right. Great opportunities for learning. And next year's kids can look back at last year's kids' videos and go, mm, I can do a better job there. Flip video tools. There are so many. I have an area on Shambles. There are so many flip video tools now. So when you get a video and you put it on YouTube, for example, so many third-party things have been made to allow you to do stuff to that, especially with assessment, recording, and reporting. Hesitating for chat there. Lots of uh, uh, apps. These are the apps on my uh, iPad, all to do with YouTube. <laughs> These are all YouTube apps. <laughs> and uh, the main the main video YouTube app is there. But if you want to try some, you can see what they do. Some of them just strip out all the rubbish that's around videos. Some of them add functionality to the videos. But as we've only got a few minutes left, I can't talk about them more. I have to talk about evaluation. Um, inevitably, somebody will ask, uh, well, how are you evaluating the suitability of that YouTube video for use with the students? 
and you'll say, and you'll give your answer, um, I have a whole list of evaluation tools for digital media. I quite like this one, Currency Relevance Authority Accuracy Purpose. I particularly like the acronym. <laughs> You're smiling, aren't you? <laughs> I love the acronym. It helps to remember the scheme, and uh, you can uh, you can find more details by going to that. We're almost to the end. YouTube started only a few months ago the ability to do live streaming. It's had Hangouts for a while. The Hangouts are so powerful. Um, actually, you can do a lot with Hangouts. Uh, in that flip video page in the last slide, there's some tools which you can lay over the top of Hangouts so you can have uh, more elaborate back-channel chat with your Hangout. You'd have to go back to look at the last link. Um, but they do now allow live streaming. <laughs> and it's amazing. So you can live stream. And as you're live streaming, it records it onto YouTube. And here it is. This, just go to this address, and you'll, you'll find it. I have a feeling you might have to be, what's that term I used at the beginning? Not, a, not a, an approved user. I've forgotten the term. And I said you had to click a button to become an approved channel. It wasn't approved, was it? Anybody remember? I can't remember. But once you've done that, uh, it will, uh, yeah, it's instantly called just a phenomenal tool there. Where are we? They have a blog for keeping up to date. They, they've got a, a Twitter uh, account. I, uh, I follow them on Twitter because I'm a big Twitterholic. Um, what I should, on hindsight, what I should put here is YouTube actually also have a lot of channels themselves. I should be subscribing to those. I should have listed those here. They have channels for different people and with different interests. I should have done something on there. So keep that in mind if you're doing that. My favorite party app, and I've used, I use this at New Year. I had a big party at our house, 40, 40, 50 people here at their house. And I had my iPad, and my iPad was airplane to my Apple TV to the big screen in the living room. And the iPad could be passed around, and people could choose what music videos they wanted. So it depends on their age. You can tell the age of people by what they choose. And then it plays to the big screen in the living room. And it was brilliant. People were, were choosing dance, dance music and all sorts of different types of music. You get some idea of my music taste from those screenshots there. But it's Soundbox, and it's fun. I am a bit critical of the app because it's not intuitive. You need to play with it a little bit to become, for it to become in, in intuitive. And one of the advantages, you can be playing something while searching for something else, rather than just going to YouTube itself. We're almost there. The slides I've put up to Flickr, these slides, they're also on, this, on SlideShare. Look at that. I went again and came back again. Um, they're on Flickr. They're also on the uh, Aussie Live SlideShare um, account. And there's a link to that on the front of the AussieLive.com web page. And this is that the last slide. Let me just check. Apparently, that was the last slide. So, Peggy. Oh, Carol's. Carol gone? Carol's disappeared. I need to wind this up now, I think. Carol is gone. <laughs> okay, <let's see. laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't turning my mic on because I couldn't stop laughing. Um, yes, Carol had to go on to moderate another session. So we have five minutes till we have to be gone. But is there anyone who would like to ask a question at this point? Um, I don't know. I mean, Shambles has been really good about keeping up with that in the chat. So um, if you have a question, you're welcome to raise your hand and take the mic, or you can type it in the chat. Anyone? I'll give you just a second there. <coughs> 
It looks like you're all perfectly satisfied, and you'll obviously be spending a whole lot of time going to all those links that Shambles has curated for us because every link represents tons more resources. So it was an incredible presentation. You covered so much in this hour, I can't believe it. And YouTube is such a valuable tool. We are very appreciative of everything that you shared with us. So with that, I'm going to say thank you all for coming and joining us in this really fun session. Tell all your friends about it. Tweet the link to the recording, and we'll get lots of people um, checking it out, I'm sure. Um, we have another session coming up very soon in just a couple of minutes. So I hope that you will stay with us. And huge thank you to you, Chris Smith. Shambles Guru for another fabulous session. Thanks so much.